Chaim. Today was the yard of the Rebbe Marash, the Chatchil Adibar. Coming in Tarev Sukkot, also this Shabbos we finish in Chitas, we finish the whole Teira. We're going to celebrate Simcha Seder in another week, but we technically finish the Teira this Shabbos, so it's an added Simcha. There's many lessons in Heroes from Sukkot, from the Rebbe Marash. Uh, just a few thoughts that come to my mind. There was a story my Zayda told me that Rav Shmuel Levitin told him, Rav Shmuel Levitin learned from Lubavitch, and there was a Yid from his own hometown that came one time to Lubavitch, and uh, Rav Shmuel Levitin wanted to try to speak to him, tell him Shalom Aleichem, but the guy was so distraught, he wasn't even able to talk, he had so many problems, he came specially to see the Rabbi Rashab, and he was, as you say, neither she was a man. she wasn't, you know, he wasn't able to function properly. Anyway, Within a minute or two, he comes out of the Rabbi Rashab and he's completely settled. He sits down, he schmoozes, he's ready to talk. It's a different man. So he wondered what happened. How did the Rabbi Rashab take care of all his problems in one minute? So he said, he went to the Rabbi Rashab and he told him all his problems. So the Rabbi Rashab went, eh, eh. So that eh changed his mood. Now, I could also say eh, but I don't know if it will make a difference to anyone. The person might even get more angry. But the point is, the Rabbi Rashab said, eh, he empowered the person to be able to rise above his difficulties, not, not to be tied down by it. The Rabbi told uh, Rabbi J.J. Hecht, the famous seat on the video also, if you look closely, for the parade, Rabbi Hecht was writing to the Rabbi, the troubles he was having. Then of the parade, the Rabbi asked him, the Rabbi, exactly how the conversation went, how it was, and he said that the Rabbi told me that the Rebbe shut me out from my problems. The Rebbe said, Ufka The Rebbe picked up his hand. Not that I slept. There's two, there's two approaches. One is you have a problem and you somehow manage to slap yourself out. The Rebbe said, I lifted you above. Ufka Haven. It's a Chatchil Adibur approach. You, 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 you don't feel tied down by your problems. You, you rise above them. You, you, how you able to do that? You need to have obviously the Kayach of the Rabbeim, of the Rabbi Marash, of Viskashas, of the Rabbi, of the Ebeshter, to be able to rise above your problems. But that's one of the, in the honor of the Chatchil Ariber, you know, this, how to deal with a problem, to go Chatchil Ariber, don't, you know, just the Chatchil jump over it. But also in your feelings and how you feel about different issues in life, are you bogged down by your problems or you feel connected to something higher? That uh, that uh, that ride that lifts you above and beyond the difficulties. So that's one thought regarding the Chatchil Ariba. The Gamtav of Sukkis has many many lessons, particularly pertinent in uh, today's in world environment. We know that uh, we say L'David Hashem Oidi during Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur and Sukkis through a Shaina Rabba. Why do we say it during these days? So in the simple pshat, I believe the Kiddush of Hanarach says that in David Hashem Eri V'yishi, we say Hashem is my light, Eri, that goes on Rosh Hashanah. Yishi is my salvation and Yom Kippur forgives my sins. And then we say, Ki Tzpineni B'Sukai, that Hashem hides me in His Sukh, in His whatever, in His um, Sukkah. In the day, B'yoyim Ra, Yas Yidei B'Sheh conceals me in the time of danger, He, he protects me. So the world today, obviously, we're, we need a lot of protection, the Gashmis and Ruchnis, with everything that's going on in the world. And the idea of Sukkot, first of all, shows us that we're connected with the Ebeshter in a way that the Ebeshter shields us, protects us, the idea of having bitachen. You know, like your you know, person feels comfortable in the presence of a parent, somebody that's showering them with love and kindness. And the sukkah, one of the things of a sukkah, is the Ebeshter is showing his love to the Jewish people in a way that it envelops them, it surrounds them, it protects them. And the way to experience it is obviously through having Simcha and Bitoch and also the idea of the Chatchil Ariba, not being bogged down by what's going on in the world every day. There's another update with this, better, worse. People can't make up their mind if things are getting better, getting worse, whatever it is. So uh, Sukkot is the ability that we're able to rise above it and to have Bitoch and to, in the way of the Chatchil Ariba. It's also the Yom Tov of Sukkot in general, in Avedas Hashem, is the idea of simcha, of, of joy. And uh, Rosh people, if you don't know this, Sukkot and Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur seem to be two opposites that are very hard to re reconcile how they both fall out within, within a few days apart from each other. But the way this explains is that Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, the person's Avedas, is more introverted, it's more in his, in his soul. 
in his connection with Abish, accepting the Abish as, as a king upon himself, doing tshuva. Yom Kippur is when everything explodes outwards in a revealed way. It's, 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 that's joy comes when things are revealed. It's the same connection with Abish, which was in Shunning Yom Kippur, in a more introverted, you might call serious, you know, more introspective. Yeah, the way, and then, and then Sukkot so comes out in the, in, the, in, the, in the way of joy, that the whole person, he loses himself in the joy. And it, it, the joy is a very, very important thing in life in general, particularly in the current situation. And in Avodah Hashem in particular, the Rambam writes, the Simcha Shal Mitzvah, the joy of a mitzvah, is Avodah Gedele, is a big Avodah. Now, it means a few things, but it also means, besides the fact that it means it's a very great way of serving the Ebeshi, of serving with Simcha, but it also means sometimes it's hard work to be besimcha. Why? Because true simcha, in order for a person to achieve true simcha, he has to forget about himself. So this explains that somebody that, you, if somebody is happy because he accomplished something, this happiness is missing, it's based on his accomplishment. He feels himself and he feels his achievement. If he feels himself, he also feels certain things he lacks. He's never going to be happy. His happiness will never be complete and his happiness will never be real. For a person to have happiness, somebody that's completely humble, he looks at himself. Even though he might he has great mileage, but he doesn't he doesn't credit himself with his achievements. He realizes that everything comes from the Abish there. Such a person is able to have true joy. True joy is only able to be experienced when you lose yourself. You don't think about yourself. It doesn't mean you you act you become a shmat or a drunk, but it means that you're able to transcend yourself. You become connected to the Abish there. It's not about me. It's what I did, I didn't do. What I achieved, I didn't achieve is that I'm a Jew. To achieve that you know, it might sound very easy, but it's, it basically means you have to forget about yourself. That's what Simcha means. David HaMalach, the, the example that the Rambam brings, David HaMalach, he was dancing away when they were bringing up to Adon HaKadosh, the Holy Ark, that's place. And his wife, Michal, the daughter of Shalom Malach, looks at him from the window. She thinks he's dancing away. Kechad Harekim, like, you know, some... It's a person that doesn't have any, any stature to himself. But it's an avoid of Bitton. So the Avoida, the Simcha, in order to experience true Simcha, a person has to forget about himself. In other words, to put it better, to transcend yourself. And when a person is able to transcend himself, he's able to experience true Simcha. So the Yantav of Sukkot is, uh, is, 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 is infusing you with Simcha for the whole year, but to properly experience Simcha, you have to go, you have to, you know, really... You know, focus on your connection with Abish in a way that you're able to let go of yourself and uh, you're able to experience true simcha. In today's environment, particularly, you all understand the importance of, of simcha and how much it's needed and how much it's necessary. Most importantly, the idea is to look at things with a positive light. The world is going through a transformation. You know, that it's clear that whatever, wherever we're holding, but this is obviously bringing the world closer to Mashiach one way or another. Why it has to be this way or not, that, that I can't, that I don't know. We won't know until Mashiach comes, but anything that happens in the world event, eventually is for Mashiach. And you see clearly how things are, you know, things are, uh, as, as it says in a number of places, before Mashiach, you know, people will lose trust in the financial institutions and governmental institutions. We we'll 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 see it happening in front of our eyes. So a person could either become a person who thinks about himself and his experience and you know the difficulties we all experienced and experienced because of it. It was very hard to be besimcha, extremely hard. When a person focuses on the light at the end of the tunnel, he forgets about himself a little bit and he focuses at the end of the day is whatever the Abish is doing is obviously to bring in the light of Mashiach into the world. So that fills him with joy. So it's an avoida for you know forgetting about yourself, focus on the future. And it's also the same thing, you have to rise above and beyond the limitations. So uh, just finish off with one word, Sukkot is, if you look at I mean, we don't you think about it, you're not, not right away going to see the connections with Mashiach, but Sukkot is so full of connections, and benching, right, we have a Rachman, Rachman, Yakim, Manu, Sukkot, David, Hanek, Fellas. So we, we connect, the, the kingdom of David, Hanek, is called the fallen Sukkah. So we we dab and Abish she rebuilds, she reset up the, the, the sukkah, the kingdom of David Hamal. There's many, many more connections, I'm not gonna go through all things, but there's one word of the Maran with Prague that I saw, a very powerful word. He says, Why do we compare the kingdom of David Hamalach to a sukkah? The kingdom of David Hamalach, comparing it to a sukkah, sukkah is a temporary dwelling, comparing it to a house would be more uh, fitting. So he says like this says, if a house falls and breaks. The house crumples down. No one is going to say, oh, I have a house. 
It's just, you know, broken down into pieces. A permanent dwelling, once it might be very permanent, but once it breaks, it's over. A sukkah, on the other hand, which is portable, so you say, I have a sukkah in my garage. It's not set up yet. It's, it's just lay, laying in a bunch of boxes, but you still, since it's portable, it has an advantage that it's still called a sukkah. It doesn't lose its name. So he says, the kingdom of David HaMalach, even at the time of Golos, when, you know, David, whatever it is, historically, there were times that the descendants of David HaMalach still had some political power, not the Galusa, whatever it is, but the point is, even at a time when it doesn't seem he has power, in every generation there's, there, there's the Mashiach over there. there, there's the person that, given any moment, he has the ability to just turn on the switch and everything comes back. The sukkah is there. It's not that you have to recreate, restructure the name, you just have to set it back up. Like someone that fell down, he just has to stand up. So this is the idea, Sukkot David Hanifelos, that it's trying to, to give us the understanding and the insight that the Machus Beis David, Mashiach, is not something that throughout the time of exile it, it didn't exist and it only will come to, into existence at the time. No, it's always there. It's always there. It's all it needs. It's, it's not, you don't have to restructure anything. It's there. Many generations didn't come into fruition in a, in a full way. But it's always there. Anyway, the Ikir is, the Ebesh should help, that we should celebrate the Sukkot and the true Simcha, with the Simcha Sa'il Malresh, and the coming of Mashiach said, Kena, then we'll see all those Shpiz and we'll have the best time ever. Chaim. Amen.